These are seven more wet and dry pantry mixes that I use for our family to save me time in the kitchen and it also saves us a lot of money. Hopefully it will save some of you guys some extra money and time too. I woke up this morning and realized that I forgot to stop at the store and pick up some sweetened condensed milk for my coffee creamer. So I figured it was about time that I learned how to make my own and maybe it would save me some money. I wasn't too sure about it because I've never, you know, tried to make it before, but hey, can't fail if you don't try, right? So there is a few different ways that you can make sweet and condensed milk and my way of doing it in this video is with instant powdered milk and some powdered sugar. You can use regular milk, you can use regular sugar. This is just what I chose to use today. Now I'm adding two cups of water to my pan with one cup of powdered sugar. And I'm gonna bring that up to a boil until all the sugar is nicely dissolved. After that, I'm gonna turn the heat down to a simmer and add in my instant dry milk. And this is where if you wanna continue just doing it on the stove, you can but I wanted to make mine quickly, so I ended up putting it in my blender. Now, if you're gonna do this, be very, very careful. I did this so that I could get um, all the chunks, uh, the like grittiness out of the condensed milk. But if you didn't wanna do this, I guess you can just leave it on the stove and just stir it for like an hour and a half or so until it like reduces down and it I, I did cook some like that and it did reduce down and it gives it like a little bit of a caramel color to it, but in my opinion, it tasted the same. So I just went ahead and did it the fast way and that works just fine for me because I primarily just use it for my coffee. But one of these batches will make one a little over a pint, as you can see. And this is what it looks like when I used two cups of instant um, dry milk instead of one and a half. It just turned into a really thick paste. So that's why I'm only using one and a half cups. And after it's been sitting in the fridge for a while, it turns out really nice. But you, cause you don't want it to be thick at first. But, I mean, it tasted exactly like sweetened condensed milk, um, just like you get from the store. So I ended up making like a quadruple batch of this. And I don't think I'll ever go back to making sweetened condensed milk ever again, or buying sweetened condensed milk ever again, I should say. Now reports say that this will last for a month in the fridge but I have read in other places that people say that it lasts longer I'm not sure so do your own research there but I wanted to show you what it looks like after how thick it thickens up after it's been refrigerated isn't that beautiful that is I don't know this was like the best day when I figured out how that I could make sweetened condensed milk at home and not have to pay $5 a can because that's around about how much I pay per a can of sweetened condensed milk. This is a huge money saver for us. This next recipe is the onion soup mix recipe. Kind of like those um, Lipton onion soup mixes that you get at the store. I buy those a lot for like, especially like if I'm making something in the crock pot so this is a huge money saver for us. And I already had all of the ingredients in my spice cupboard, which a lot of people may have already as well. This recipe is equivalent to one packet of the Lipton onion soup mix. It calls for dried onion flakes, beef bouillon granules, onion powder, parsley, celery seed, paprika, and ground black pepper. And that's it. I make double and triple batches of these 
the seasoning and I keep them in the mason jars in my pantry. And the best thing about that is, is because they use simple ingredients that are already in my spice cabinet, I can easily make more whenever I run out. You can also use beef bouillon cubes if you don't have the beef granules and that will work just as well. And this will store in your pantry for up to six months. I don't need to run to the grocery store to get a pack of Lipton onion soup mix anymore. Next up is the no need garlic cheesy bread that I had made in a previous video that I have gotten so many questions about. This is a very easy recipe. It is a no need recipe and all you do, and you only have to let it rest for an hour and a half. So it's a very quick bread. In this bread recipe, you can add any ingredients that you would like. This is just for inspiration. The recipe is one and a half cups of water, two and a fourth teaspoon of yeast, three and a fourth cups flour, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, two cups cheddar cheese, one cup of Parmesan cheese, a fourth of a cup of bacon, a fourth of a cup of chives, and chopped red onion. The best way to mix this up is to just get in there with your hands and you don't have to knead it, you just need to incorporate all the ingredients. And that's it. All you do is you just set it aside for about an hour and a half to two hours and after the time's up, you need to preheat your oven and put in whatever dish that you're baking it in while you're preheating. And take your dough out of the bowl, put it on top of some parchment paper while your oven is heating up, and just plop it right down. Now, you don't have to do anything special if you don't want to, but I just chose to just put it all in a ball so it'd be easier for me to manage. But you can just put it on the paper and don't have to do anything to it. Now, be very careful when you're doing this because I've burnt myself a few different times. Make sure you wear oven gloves. Just plop that bread right down inside of the Dutch oven and put it in there covered up for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes is up, you are going to uncover it and cook it for an additional five to 10 minutes until you get the top nice and crispy. Ideally, ideally you would let this rest for about an hour or so before cutting into it, but I really wanted a piece because it smelled amazing. So this is what it looks like on the inside. It's nice and cheesy, bacony, oniony. You can do so many different things with this we've made pizzas with this bread we have made grilled cheeses and this here is one of my favorites grilled cheese sandwiches i cooked this in a pan with some um, butter sauteed onions and this was absolutely delicious This next recipe is a condensed soup mix recipe that is um, shelf stable. We're gonna use cornstarch, pepper, and some granulated chicken bouillon. We're also going to be using this instant dry milk. Okay, so we are gonna add two cups of the instant dry milk mix, and we're also gonna be using three-fourths of a cup of cornstarch. Now my jar was not very big so I ended up having to switch out this jar. I don't know what I was thinking but yeah I ended up having to put this in a quart size jar but no worries it's okay. Now to that we're gonna add a fourth of a cup of chicken bouillon and then we're gonna have a half of a teaspoon of black pepper. Now that's it. If you wanna add anything else to this condensed soup, you can. You can add onion powder, basil, thyme, you name it. 
it's your kitchen, your rules, you do what you want. But I'm gonna show you how this comes together in about 60 seconds on the stove. Okay, to make this soup, we're gonna use one and a fourth cups of water into a saucepan, and then we are going to use a third of a cup of the mix, and that's it. And all we're gonna do is whisk this together for about a minute, and then it comes together really fast, so you gotta pay attention, don't leave it set or anything, because it thickens up extremely fast. So I figured I'd show you guys what this looks like when it's all made up, because I didn't believe it until I tried it myself. So, yep. So those are the ingredients in homemade cream of chicken soup. These are the ingredients from the store-bought cream of chicken soup. So the mix will keep several months in an air in an airtight container. Um, this recipe makes three cups of mix, which is equivalent to about nine cans of soup. So this saves us a lot of money as well. The next recipe that we're making will be a vanilla cake mix that I came up with after doing a lot of experimenting all of these dry ingredients will fit into a quart sized jar so i'm using two and a quarter cups of flour one and a half cups of sugar three and a half teaspoons of baking powder and uh, four tablespoons of buttermilk powder and a teaspoon of salt so I figured that I would explain a little bit how to, the best way to make this cake mix. Because I've made a lot of cakes that just did not turn out and it was just a complete waste of my time. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to cream the butter for at least three to five minutes. After that, you're gonna add the remaining wet ingredients in this recipe. After you get all the wet ingredients combined, then you're just gonna start adding your mix slowly to the wet ingredients. I then mixed it all on medium speed for about three minutes. After that, you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees and pour your batter into a 13 by nine inch baking dish, greased baking dish. You're going to cook this cake for about 30 to 35 minutes. You're going to let this cool for about an hour before you frost it. Now I used a homemade frosting using my homemade sweetened condensed milk and some butter with a little bit of vanilla and it turned out fantastic. If you would like the full recipe, I will also leave this in the description for everybody as well. I started making my own frostings after a while because I just didn't really care for the store-bought frostings anymore since I was a kid. I made this cake for my birthday on this day and this was probably the best cake that I've ever made. Next up is the peanut butter granola. And this recipe is also very adaptable to whatever flavors that you want to use in your granola. It's a bit cheaper than what you can buy at the store. And again, you can control all the ingredients that you put in there. So I also wanted to show you guys that I've been doing really well on keeping my cupboard organized after my video that I had posted of my farmhouse organization and I feel so good after I open my cupboards every day looking at all of the homemade things and how organized I've been keeping it. I just wanted to show you guys because I'm kind of proud of it and these baskets by the way really really help too and remember I got those at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 so to me that was a really good deal. 
So on to the recipe. We're going. I'm going to switch up my recipe a little bit just by changing some of the um, seeds and nuts that I put in. I'm going to use some sunflower seeds and I'm going to use some pumpkin seeds. Now, I'm also going to use some walnuts too, but you can use whatever you would like. Again, this is for inspiration for others. So I'm also going to be using honey, but you can use maple syrup. You can use sugar. You can use pretty, I mean, this recipe again is very adaptable to your needs. Oh, let's not forget about the peanut butter. We do have to add peanut butter to make this a peanut butter granola. Okay, to a large, in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna add one cup of very hot water and two heaping tablespoons of peanut butter. We're gonna give that a quick mix until it's fully dissolved and then add one cup of your sweetener. I'm using honey. You can use whatever sweetener you'd like. After that, you're gonna add three teaspoons of cinnamon and one teaspoon of salt and get all of that a quick mix and then start adding in your rolled oats. I added four cups of oats and then I added about two cups worth of whatever nuts that you would like and give it a quick mix. Line your baking pan with some parchment paper and spread this out as evenly as you can. Then you're going to put this into a 300 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Take it out, flip the granola, and then put it back in for another 20 or 30 minutes until you um, your desired consistency of granola. I leave mine in for about another half an hour because I like the crispiness. I like my granola a bit more crispy than soft. So, but if you don't like your granola crispy, don't leave it in for that long. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. It holds its shape pretty much. It don't all, you know, fall apart like most granola recipes do. I like for to have my granola in like clusters so that one because I use it for cereal and yogurt and stuff like that so I just I don't want it to be just a you know like the shake of the bottom of a cereal box I want it to have you know big clumpy crunchy clusters you can add dried all sorts of different dried fruits to this but this would last well over a month in your pantry. So for this snacks recipe I got online from Mama Bowls and I'll link um, that in the description box below but I was looking for an instant oatmeal like packet recipe for Matthew because he loves instant oatmeal and I one thing that I learned about that because I, I from trial and error I you have to use the the quick oats not the rolled oats in this recipe so this recipe calls for 10 cups of quick oats so the first thing that you would do is you would take four cups of that 10 cups and put it in a food processor or blender and blitz it up until it becomes like a, a fine powdery type, almost, yeah, kind of like this. Now after that, you're just gonna put it in a bowl and you're gonna add your remaining six cups of quick oats to this mixture. Then you add your one cup powdered milk, your half a cup of brown sugar and two teaspoons of salt and that's it but I ended up adding cinnamon to this mixture and a little bit more sugar for Matthew because he likes his oatmeal very very sweet but you don't have to put in the extra sugar let's see if Matthew thinks there's enough sugar 
definitely needs a little more brown sugar. You can store this in an airtight container in your cupboard for two months. You can also add in different types of dried fruits to this oatmeal and then place them in individual baggies for quick use or just add in the fruits when you make them. So those are my preps for the week. I would like to take the time out to say thank you so much for stopping by and visiting our channel. And if you haven't yet, please like, share, and subscribe. And I am still in the process of getting our pantry stocked and our freezer stocked. So stay tuned for the next video and have a blessed day.